Mr. Remain, just your thoughts on returning today, the frustration over not being able to practice, and just looking ahead, what do you expect? Yeah, yeah you know, it was, it was great to be back out there today. Um, you know, it was real tough. Uh, you know, kind of a freak injury that happened during the uh, conditioning exam we had, and uh, it was just frustrating because, you know, you put in all that time and all the effort in the offseason to get ready for the marathon that is the season, and something like that happens. But, you know, he just came back from an uh, attack to attack the rehab, and uh, it's good to be back out here. What made the freak injury? I mean, did just that it happen when it did, or did it happen? Yeah, you know, it's just, just it happening on a, on a – on a routine run, you know, something uh, you don't even think about, you know, you don't think about happening or doing. Uh, I was just thankful that it wasn't anything worse and that it was something that I could uh, attack and get back from in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, what did it feel like when it happened? It didn't feel great. <laughs> it didn't feel great, but, uh, you know, the prognosis was good and uh, we have a great training staff here that uh, kind of saved me for myself because I would have uh, pushed it a bit, but uh, they, they, they worked with me and they, they had the best course of action for me, so I'm, I was just excited to uh, attack it with them every day, and I knew they'd get me back uh, to where I need to be. What's the feeling like in the O-line room right now as you guys are starting to get healthier and stronger and kind of finding some chemistry there? Yeah, we're just we're just excited. Um, we just want to keep getting better every day. Um, you know, it's I'm Mr. Cliche, but I just like to – I know we, we just do our work every day and we get a little bit better and uh, – and you know, now that we're all coming together, it'll be it'll be really nice these last uh, couple weeks of camp to be able to uh, keep getting better and keep just getting back acclimated to each other, getting ready for uh, the the last preseason game, the next regular, the first regular season game. You bumped outside the tackle last year. Why do you think you had the success you had down the stretch? Uh, just you know, the the approach. Um, I've 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 had a, a long background playing tackle in the NFL, so uh, going back to that, and also the uh, under direction of Juan and uh, Donovan, you know, we've been able to uh, really hone in on some things that uh, I, w you know, wasn't doing in Seattle that uh, I got back to doing here, and and you know, it was it was a cool experience, cool to see the success, you know, even though it wasn't the whole season for it to be seven games worth. I think it was it was pretty good to uh, get my feedback wet at it, and you know, to have a whole off season, and even though I missed the first couple weeks of camp. Uh, we still have time to get back and uh, get back to where I need to be. What are some of the specific things you worked on with Juan and Donnie to, to, to kind of get back? Just, just, just staying square, staying square, not turning. Um, it's so critical <laughs> for tackles, offensive linemen in general. You know, when you turn, you give guys a short edge, and you can get in trouble that way. But, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to stay square. We're going to set vertical. We're going to set back. And uh, we're going to do the technique the right way. And when we're doing the technique that way, we – we find ourselves having a lot of success. So uh, under under their tutelage, they've been able to instill that in me, and I think uh, all the guys have bought into that as well. When a, pl when a player uh, like Jason Peters comes under your line, into your uh, room and, and on your line, what, what kind of impact does it have to somebody like you? Uh, you know, his, his, this is experience. You know, I've uh, I've been blessed to be able to play with you know with a guy like Dwayne Brown, who's kind of been around like Jason Peters has been, and so now being with Jason, you know, it's like it's like, dang, you know, that, that experience is like, you know, invaluable. You know, uh, it's not even just all about football stuff, just life stuff too, uh, you know, relationships, things like that, uh, financial stuff. You know, you talk to him about anything because he's been in it so long, seen everything, nothing you can really come to him with that he has not experienced. So just, you know, being a sponge, you know, I'm not sure it gets annoying guys coming up to him all the time, but, you know, that, those those type of guys, they love just sharing and, and – uh, you know, putting their arms around the younger guys and really uh, uh, telling them the way because, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Any surprise at all that somebody at, at the age of 39 would want to come back and keep playing football in the trenches like that? You know, it's, it's not surprising. You know, he's, he, he, he's just a guy that loves the ball, you know, and, and and he knows he can still do it at a high level. So he's going to be out here doing it. You know, a lot of guys be like, you know, I'm done. I'm done at a certain age. But – Certain guys, you see Brady, uh, Dwayne, who I just mentioned, he'll be 36. Uh, you know, these guys, they just they just love the game and they have no reason to walk away if it's if it's not their time. How does he carry himself in the meeting rooms or within the locker room? He's, you know, a professional. He's a professional guy. He's he's just, you know, a vet. You know, you, you meet enough vets, he just his, – his presence it speaks for itself. He doesn't even have to really say anything. It's just the way he carries himself and he carries himself uh, like someone that's done it for a while and uh, 
has done at a high level for a while. So it's impressive to see. And you, you know, I'm in my sixth year, but I'm still learning and I'm still wanting to learn. So having a guy like that, the, you know, we we're even just working on some things outside just now. It's it's just great to be out there and it, you know, even if it's making me one percent better, it, it's great to soak it all in. Yeah, you know, it's a tough situation because, you know, he, he wanted to be out there. You know, we're such a close-knit group, and we he wanted to be out there. He wanted to uh, give it his all for us. But, you know, sometimes circumstances dictate that that's not able to happen. So, you know, he's a fighter. You know, he wanted to fight through it, but it, ju- it just wasn't the time right now. And um, he, he's going to – he's another guy who's just going to attack the rehab. He's going to attack it, and he's going to – He's gonna come back better, and it's it's good to you know you don't want those type of things nagging. So it's good that he's able to get it done, and you know he's still young and has so much ball ahead of him. So uh, he'll he'll be he'll be back and he'll be better than ever. What are, what are the biggest things you're looking to take out of these next two weeks, right? The, the shorter on ramp to week one than you would have liked to have, but what, you've got some time now to, to squeeze yeah. out of it. Yeah, you know, just just working on the fundamentals, getting back to uh, doing it every day, the everyday practice routine, and really attacking practice and. Uh, fighting to get better every day because uh, you, you, you're around ball enough, you kind of get complacent and you want to get through it, but you have to fight that feeling of complacency and every day has to be a day you get a little bit better. And uh, like you said, I'm starting a little later, so I probably have to put a little bit more into it, but I've also haven't had the toll of camp, so I can kind of push a little more. And I have to push a little more. I will push a little more. But uh, like you said, you know, when it gets here, it gets here and it's, it's time to go. So we got, like you said, two weeks to kind of just hit it hard and really kind of sprint this two weeks out and, and, and get a lot of into it because, you know, I do have a little bit of catching up to do. If you were given a choice, would you play Saturday? Yes. Yes, I would. When, when Jenkins was drafted and Charles Leno was still here, did you think he was going to take your spot? Did you feel like that was what he was pegged for? You know, I, I, I had no one discussed anything with me. I was just I was just like, it's another guy coming in to compete and, uh, you know, the best five will play. Uh, I don't really think of it as, oh, he's coming to take your job because, you know, NFL is – it's such a business where everybody has to earn everything. You know, a lot of guys don't just – you're not going to get thrown out thrown out there in front of a better player just because of draft status, you know. Because, uh, you know, you play long enough, you see that. You see, oh, this guy was a third rounder. Well, he's still not better than that guy. So, so you know, the best five play, the, uh, the guys who perform are going to be out there. And, um, and like I said, he's he's going to have a terrific career. He's, he's shown us already flashes of what he can do. Uh, just unfortunately, he wasn't able to be out there. But – you know, you, you you never think that way. You just always think, all right, you know, I, I can only control what I control, and uh, everything after that is just it is what it is. It's above my finger, you know. Well, that says you can be a Pro Bowl player. How, how inspiring is that to hear? I don't. I imagine he's told you the same thing. But uh, how inspiring is it to have your coach have that much confidence in you? That uh, it, it's you, you know, it's it, it's inspiring, but it, it's it speaks to uh, the way he's seen me work, the way he knows that I work, the way I'm wired. And the player that I can be, and uh, just shows shows me that he knows I'm continuing to get better and working at the things that I need to get better at. So, um, you know, it's cool to have uh, the coach have all the confidence in you, and and I'm going to keep uh, I'm going to keep feeding that confidence. I'm going to keep uh, showing him that he was right to say those things. Those are both statements. You know, uh, people kind of raise an eyebrow at it, which is fine. But when he told me that, I was like, Yeah, I'm with you. I don't think that's un- unattainable. I think. We're right there. I think we've got all the tools, so we just got to do it, and we've got to do it every day. Talk about having to push yourself, you know, to catch up. How do you feel physically after this first practice? I feel good. Um, you know, I didn't do, a, I didn't get to do a, a bunch today, but uh, we're, we're building up a little more every day. I got to do a lot uh, pre-practice and after practice. So uh, during practice, I'll, I'll keep ramping up. Uh, but it'll be a challenge. It'll be, you know, kind of conditioning on the fly too, because you know, uh, you really only get that football shaped by playing football, putting on the pads, and going out there and doing team. So that's going to be uh, a challenge, but a fun challenge. And, you know, we want that type of challenge. So I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm excited to keep uh, building on, on uh, today, this whole week.